Hi, I'm Corey Rich, and you're watching Adorama TV. In this episode of Exploring the Creative Process, we are going to talk about graduated neutral density filters. Adorama TV presents Getting the Shot with Corey Rich. Hi, I'm Corey Rich, and you're watching Adorama TV. In this episode of Exploring the Creative Process, I'm going to talk about graduated filters, or split filters, as they're commonly called. I've probably been to Patagonia, Argentina a half dozen times. Patagonia, amongst other things, is famous for its rock climbing. That's really core to who I am. But Patagonia is also famous for incredibly awful weather, high winds, enormous amounts of rain, and so to actually get a shot at climbing one of those big rock towers, it actually takes a lot of waiting around. No one goes to Patagonia for less than a month. And in a month, you might only get a few days of rock climbing opportunity. Years ago, I went to Patagonia with David Lama, one of the world's greatest alpinists or mountain climbers on the planet. David was attempting to free climb the Cerro Torre. Cerro Torre is one of the most impressive peaks in the world, just a granite spire sticking up out of the ice cap on the southern tip of Argentina in Patagonia. You spend lots of time waiting for the weather to clear. And when you finally get a shot, it's you drop whatever's happening and you go. Oftentimes that means starting your hike or your approach into the mountains in the middle of the night. In this particular occasion, we left at midnight. We set our alarms for 1130, just enough time to brew coffee, put our backpacks on and start walking. But then as the sun began to rise, I realized there was an amazing photographic opportunity unfolding in front of me. We were literally hiking into the mountains on the tail end of the storm that was now clearing. And the sun was starting to peek out as it was poking over the horizon. And all of the sudden we could see the amazing Patagonia towers in the background, including Cerro Torre, as David and his partner walked in front of me. Now, as a photographer, one of the things that I'm always trying to decide in these adventure environments is when do I actually stop, slow down, pull out my camera, and try to make pictures versus when do I just keep up with the athletes? But I knew this was a special opportunity, so I dropped my backpack, pulled out the camera, shouted up ahead to David, hey, can you guys stop? I just want to make a couple of pictures. They realize, athletes that spend time in the outdoors, when they see these magical light shows, they also understand it's a unique opportunity, and it's time to take advantage of the situation. So it was an amazing scene, right? It's obvious that this is a fantastic photographic opportunity, but it's very tricky from an exposure standpoint. If I expose for the highlight, the towers, then the athletes are going to be in the dark. If I expose for the athletes in the shade, then the towers are going to be blown out. So what is the silver bullet? What's the secret weapon? It's graduated filters in this case. So I pulled out a three-stop soft grad filter. So the top half of the filter is denser than the bottom half. The bottom half is clear, top half is three stops darker. And there's a soft edge, it, it slowly transitions into no ND. So in this situation, I stood on a rock, put the graduated filter in front of the camera, and the athletes walked through my frame, I'm depressing the shutter, and I've done something that otherwise is impossible. Without this grad filter, I would not have had the opportunity to equalize the exposure. Now I have equal exposure for the athletes who are in a shadow and the amazing peaks that are lit up in the sunlight. When I'm in the mountains, I'm a fast and light guy. I actually carry just three filters. I find that if I'm gonna pull out a grad filter, it's because the light is radically different. So I carry a three-stop hard, three-stop soft, and a two-stop hard. I don't carry a filter holder when I'm actually running and gunning in the mountains. I've found that I can actually just hand hold the filter in front of the camera. Now my success rate's not perfect. Sometimes I miss frames, the filter's in the wrong place. Occasionally I scratch the filters from rubbing them against the camera, but it's less equipment, less is more, faster, lighter, that's the key. Today, if I were gonna be out in Patagonia shooting the same frame, I certainly would be on a Nikon D750 16 to 35 millimeter f4 lens maybe the 24 millimeter 14 prime but that's probably more weight than i'm willing to carry if i'm really moving light and fast and of course i'd be shooting the sandisk extreme pro cf or sd cards 
I think you've listened to me say many times in episodes of exploring the creative process that less is more, that I'm a minimalist. But if you're looking to up your photography game, you might want to play with buying at least a single grad filter. I would recommend buying a three-stop hard or a three-stop soft, or if you have a little extra budget, buy both. The grad filters will allow you to problem solve in situations like Patagonia, where you're dealing with highlights and shadows and trying to equalize that exposure. But most importantly, it's not about the equipment. It's about getting out there, having real life experiences, and trying to create powerful, interesting pictures that hopefully will move people. Thanks for listening. I'm Corey Rich. This is Adorama TV. There's tons of free content just like this published on a regular basis. So if you haven't already, please tune into our YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Do you want great-looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy-to-use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.